Hey guys, it's your boy Dean Pearl. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's doing well. And today we'll be discussing why it's as good a time as any to get into a Warhammer 40k universe. Now, the Warhammer 40k universe has been around for a very, very long time, so a lot of people feel intimidated and they don't know where to start. Worry not, I will share my book collection with you today. I myself only started getting into the Warhammer 40k about a year or two ago. I really enjoy Warhammer Fantasy, I'm a total War Warhammer 3 freak, I've been playing the game for 3-4,000 hours, and I thought, hey, let's give the Warhammer 40k universe a go. And that's what today's video is going to address, the pretty much best books to um, read to get into it. So I've select, uh, sort of broken it down to four categories here, which is the must-read classics, amazing but advanced. So amazing but advanced means they're great books, you get a lot of value from, but it helps if you're familiar with the Warhammer universe. Great for beginners are books that pretty much you could know nothing about the Warhammer 40k universe. You can just jump in and pretty much learn as you go. This is how I started. And requires some past knowledge are uh, the even like the most advanced books that you it would serve you best and get the most value out of if you knew what the books were about. Ah, uh, sorry, well. well what the prerequisites to getting into these books was about. Alright, so first up we have the Master Read Classics. Now one thing to note here is you can jump into this as a beginner, as a very good introductory books, but they're also like an all-time favorite Warhammer 40k fans book. So we'll start off with the Talon of Horus. So this gives you a very good introduction of the the warp, the warring factions, how the Black Legion was created and the new war master and we'll also touch um, pretty much basics on the past of the Horus Heresy and so on and we'll even explain the Horus Heresy to you. Um, so it's a it's a good introduction into the um, the Chaos Astartes, um, what sort of drives them different ambitions from different factions and it'll give you sort of like a good indication of what each Chaos God stands, uh, stands for. So. It's, once again, good introduction to find your feet and to understand how the warp is, how it works, and all the sorcery associated with it. But um, it will not overly confuse you or anything like that. Okay, next up we have Farsight. So, Farsight uh, revolves around the Tower Empire, around a commander who's pretty much challenging the status quo. Why I think this is a classic and also a very good introduction book is because it gives you an insight into Tower Society what makes them tick, how all the different cases work, how um, they rely on technology, you know, how, what, what makes them unique in their own way. And pretty much it tells you what their philosophy is about. So they call it the greater good and it tells you what the greater good is about. So I would highly, highly recommend you go for Crisis of, uh, of Faith Farsight here, the first and second book. So the second book obviously um, builds on the first. Next up, um, I would recommend Dante. Dante is an amazing amazing book and it's um, pretty much the the backstory of Commander Dante who is the leader of the Blood Angels, he's chapter master and from his humble beginnings all the way to him pretty much being promoted as chapter master and he just gives you his humble beginnings and how he started uh, talks about the planets of Baal and, and the um, surrounding system so here you'll learn how the Astartes were created, particularly the Blood Angels, and pretty much what makes them tick. Why are they the way they are, who their gene father is. So for those who are not familiar, uh, every single Astarte possesses a gene seed, and the gene seed is pretty much a piece of their Primarch. And all, for example, Blood Angels are, are creating the image of their gene father, who was Sanguinius, the most perfect of the Primarchs. But I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you jump in the book, highly, highly recommend you read it. Uh, next up on my must-read classics book is The Infinite Divine. So this is about Trazen, the Infinite, and Orican, the Diviner. <laughs> Polar opposites, very, very different characters. So it'll give you a um, brief sort of introduction into the Necrons, who they are, what they stand for, what makes them tick, um, their rivalries, uh, their battles, their struggles, and Pretty much you learn a lot about the history as well, how they are undying, so on and so on. Once again, this is this, this is not about getting to spoilers, but I just want to give you a general overview. So, so far we've covered the Blood Angels, which is the Astartes, the Black Legion, 
um, the towel, now the neck on, so you will have a very solid foundation of what these um, factions slash races stand for. Um, another Origins book is the Space Wolf, so the Space Wolf are another chapter of the Space Marine. Once again, very similar to Dante, this one follows Ragnar Blackmane. It tells you about the world of Fenris, surrounding planets, the system, how the Space Wolves are selected and what makes them one of the most formidable Astartes uh, in the Warhammer 40k universe. They are essentially the executions of the Emperor. Uh, also talks about the Gene Father, which is Lehman Rust, Primarch. And once again, not to get into spoilers, but I would highly, highly recommend if they are an amazing chapter. Very stubborn, but also very loyal. Next up, we have Hell's Reach. Pretty much any Aaron Debsky Bowden book, or um, uh, what's it called? Or Dan Abnett book is an instant classic. These guys are very, very, very experienced writers. So, Hell's Reach is about um, Armageddon. They've been invaded by Orc invasion, huge, never seen on scale before, led by Gazgul, who's the um, the orc leader of the war um, and pretty much a chapter of the Black Templars get sent there on a suicide mission led by a uh, chaplain and his name is uh, what was his name Grimaldus and he is absolutely brutal but he's such a lovable character um, and showcases Titan battles showcases the Black Templars who they are what they stand for and you get a good insight about the orcs and how they fight and and what their ambitions are, if any. Um, so, another classic must-read book. Next up, so this is a, a little bit more advanced, but this is Belisarius called the Great Work. So, Cole is an Archmagos, some call him heretic within his own order. He's the guy that pretty much cracked the gene code beside, behind the um, Adeptus Astartes, and he created a, a new breed of Adeptus Astartes called the, um, uh, the, the Primarchs. Oh, sorry, not Primarchs, Primaris Marines. So they're, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. But, you know, he... How do I word this? His past is not black and white. He, he operates in the grey. And in this particular book, they go to this mountain that hides a lot of secrets. And from there, it just pretty much escalates. You, you, um, it's, the world itself has been devoured by Tyranids. And there's a disgrace chapter there. And... It's an awesome, awesome book. I don't want to spoil anything, but I would highly, highly recommend it if you're you're a beginner, new to the universe, or you're someone that hasn't read it. What a book! Absolute classic, amazing, one of my personal favorites. Next up, we have Xenos by Eisenhorn, and this starts uh, an eight series book so far. This is my ultimate favorite in the Warhammer 40k. I just wish I read it later on. Like this was like fourth or fifth book I read. I wish I read it after I was more familiar with the universe, but Gregor Eisenhorn is an Inquisitor, gives you a good um, view of the Inquisition, the different autos within the Inquisition. It's just awesome, freaking amazing, I cannot recommend it enough, but it is heavy on the law, so maybe read some other beginner-friendly Warhammer books, which we'll go through in this section before you jump into it. Um, and I always usually, uh, when, when, I, when I listen to these ebooks where I'm at a gym or at home, I usually Google what I'm not familiar with, just so I can get a bit of a background story. And last but not least, on the classics, is the Devastation of Bell. So once again, Bell is the, blood, uh, the homeworld of the Blood Angels, uh, where Commander Dante resides, and pretty much a high fleet tendril of Leviathan. Leviathan is a, is a high fleet of Tyranids. It gives you a very good indication of what the Tyranid is about, uh, what the Blood, Mar uh, the Blood Angels are about, um, how they fight, you know, their traditions, so on and so on. So, another amazing must-read book. I cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't already listened to it, go and give it a go. You will not be disappointed. This is an all-time classic. Okay, next up we have the Amazing but Advanced category. Just like the, the books above, these are just as good, but they do require prior knowledge. First up, we have the Lion, Son of the Forest. So, the Lion is a Primarch, one of the 20 Primarchs, 20 old Primarchs. Um, and to understand the magnitude of what it means in the Warhammer universe, it is best that you read a lot of books before this one, just so you know how things are shaping up and what makes the Lion who he is, what he stands for. He's got a very checkered past, uh, he's got a very sort of um, complex personality, and despite being ancient, literally waking up after 10,000 years, 
he's almost changing who he was because he realized that he needs to do better and be better so it's a great journey of him coming back and rediscovering himself which is an awesome awesome book but once again if you can hold off on it before like uh, reading other books I'd highly advise it because you will get a lot more value and satisfaction out of it Next up, I have the Mephiston series. So Mephiston is the chief librarian for the Blood Angels, so they're psychers, they're pretty much like space wizards. Um, but they're very, very complex. They, their whole chapter is shrouded in secrets and darkness, which I'm not going to spoil for you. But they're pretty much like, like vampire Astartes, vampire space marines. And they have what they call the thirst and the hunger, the black rage. So... Pretty much when their Primarch got killed, he, the, the Psyche, pretty much that whole trauma got passed on to his, um, to his sons and they relive that moment and they pretty much go berserker and they, they lose themselves to sanity. But Mephiston here is the only one able to come back from the Black Rage and not once but he's done it twice and no one knows how he, how he did it. Um, so this is a story of redemption, trying to seek cure for his whole chapter and in the process discovering himself. He is an awesome character, awesome, awesome character, albeit brutal, but it makes a very, very good, enjoyable read. So uh, if you're going to get into Mephiston, you will need to juggle the, um, the Dante book. I would, I would suggest you start there. Then you do like uh, Mephiston, Blood of Sanguinius. Then you do like Devastation of Baal. Then you do uh, Mephiston, second book. Um, then darkness in the blood there is a way someone on reddit posted a thread on how you can go on about doing it but um all of these books here these three are, are pretty much carry on stories you can do all the dante books without doing the mephiston books but you'll be missing out on important information um so just the mephiston series sort of time all together great great books i would highly highly advise reading them um just learning about the, the librarians and their connection to the warp and how they deal with demons and their inner demons, no pun intended. It is freaking amazing. And it's what makes the, the, the Warhammer universe so great. Um, moving on, we have Gregor Eisenhower again, Hereticus, Malleus. So this is a continuation of the book above. So these three here. Um, he's a complex character. If, if, all of these like characters are very complex and that's what makes them so great. They're not black and white. Their, their ambitions, their, their drives, it's it's not black and white. It's complex, it's intricate, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. Like Gregor started as a purist um, within his uh, Inquisition and then he pretty much borderline heretic. But once again, not to spoil, these are the back best books in my, my humble opinion. A must read, go and check it out, freaking insane. Next up we have Ravenor, so Ravenor pretty much continues the story after the four books of Gregor Eisenhall. Ravenor was Gregor's uh, interrogator, at one point in time he was a, he's a potent psyker, but he suffered a very very bad accident uh, when, when heretics uh, attacked the world and he pretty much got burned, his whole body's burned, he's, 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 like a, he's like a vegetable in his chair, he uses like a Professor Xavier X chair that, that just floats him around. But his mind is where everything is, and, and he's just a powerful psyker. And then you have three books of Gregor Eisenhorn. They chase a very, very uh, powerful enemy in the dark, who I believe is going to be the next threat in the Warhammer 40k universe. Once again, not to spoil, but crazy, crazy good story. And then it touches on to um, Pariah, Beckwin, and Pariah. What's this one? Pentinet. So Pentinet and Pariah. That's book seven, that's book eight. Or or book eight and nine something like that so this whole story so there's four Gregor Eisenhower books there's three Ravenel books there's there's two um, uh, Elizabeth Beckwin novels and there's a third one about to come called Pandemonium I think now that the whole Horus Heresy is done I'm pretty sure Dan Abnett should be working on it so that should be coming out very soon as well which will um, just take the story a uh, step further all right now next up we have the great for beginners category and I've only got one series in here, and that is um, Caiaphas Kane. <laughs> so Caiaphas Kane is one of the best characters in the Warhammer 40k universe. He is a commissar, but he is unlike most commissars. He is very hesitant to execute people. He's only 
worried about his self-preservation and his pretty much belief is that if he inspires the men rather than scare them there won't be any stray bullets in the battlefield out to get him so on and so on but besides that cowardly facade he has actually saved the Imperium on many 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 occasions he's a master swordsman like him and his chainsword he can hold off against like Astartes he, he will stand his ground he's, so he's a master swordsman He's actually brave despite um, despite uh, appearing to be cowardly and he likes to flirt with death both um, metaphorically and physically so he's a uh, Shaboyan King and Inquisitor <laughs> which is very very dangerous for his health but also he puts himself in, uh, in, in harm's way more often than not to save the Imperium despite make it, making it look like he was there by accident Crazy good, crazy, crazy good. But what makes him, um, what makes this series, should I say, great for beginners? Well, it's the fact that he'll, he'll pretty much encounter all known races in the Warhammer universe, or most of them anyway, from like um, the Tyranids, most of his books are based on Tyranids, to Orcs, um, the Necrons, um, you know, cultists, um, demons of uh, Slanesh. So you'll be gently guided into the world of Warhammer, uh, Warhammer 40k without needing to know any other books or any prerequisites or any prior knowledge. These were actually the first books I started with um, in the Warhammer 40k universe and holy moly has it been absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. Just great. It's the great series, very light-hearted, humorous. Um, some interesting characters, it will uh, introduce the world of the Blanks, so the Blanks are pretty much the anti psychers so if psychers are wizards, these guys are like anti-wizards, they pretty much nullify, um, they call them nulls as well, because they nullified psychers ability to function, and one of his uh, assistants who's very smelly, never showers, hogs all the food, and his first not, he's a Blank, and it's pretty much about their journey throughout the Imperium, and you, it starts with a very sort of young Caiaphas Kane, navigating through politics, uh, deadly landscapes, all the way to his ways, much older, and he's back at the academy and he's teaching, and just pretty much um, it's a collection of his stories throughout the universe, told uh, via sort of the, the eye lenses of um, um, Inquisitor Amberly Lane, I think her name, last name is, from the Ordo Xenos. So crazy, crazy good. Um, you get a good look at the Inquisition and just the introduction to all the races that make up the Warhammer 40k universe. So highly, highly recommend starting out with Caiaphas Kane. Um, it will pretty much give you also a in-depth view of the astronaut, tell them what they are about, how they function and how they differ from like uh, each other. So different planets will, will produce different sort of um, astronaut, terrain, like for example, Cadians, Elite, um, there's the, the death world of Krieg, um, so on and so on. So these guys are from Valhalla, they, that's what they call the Valhalla Regiment, and they, they come from like a snowy planet, so they excel in snow, snowy warfare. So yeah, give it a crack. Um, I think what is it, like 11 books or something? Vainglory's being the last one? Yes, uh, it's 11 books. Fair bit to get through, but they're all different, they're all unique, they're all very funny, so highly, highly recommend you start there if you're... Um, not familiar with the Warhammer 40k universe. All right, and last but not least we have the require some past knowledge category You can skip and read these straight away, but they are some of the more difficult reads um, Especially the um, carry on throne here. So this one here. It's about intrigue politics backstabbing and pretty much it's oriented around the throne of the Empire uh, Emperor and how it works and how it's failing and so on and so on so very very good read again but it is a more difficult read than like the rest of the books so i would leave probably this ones for last they're great but they're not as exciting as the other ones unfortunately next up we have the emperor's gift which uh, delves into the grey knights so they are a chapter which specializes into uh, hunting demons they're all psychers so like space wizards but the way these guys work is they work in unity like as one mind Per squad is like five six of them and they all operate under one mind they're very strong together but if one of them falls that bond sort of breaks and they become very vulnerable great book um discusses you know interchapter politics um introduces also the gray wolves the inquisition 
awesome, awesome book, and you also get a uh, a very good look at Anglon, the Red, Red Demon, as well, who, who is the fallen Primarch of the World Eaters. Next up, we have Assassinorum, Kingmaker. So, this is a good introduction into the Assassin world of Warhammer 40k, how they work for the for the um, Golden Throne, and how they all differ from each other. Um, so, once again, heavy read. In, it requires some prior knowledge to truly enjoy and unlock the value of this. So I'd highly, highly recommend that you do read other books before you jump into this one. But it's a great read, not, nonetheless. Next up, we have the Ragnar books. The first one I put as part of the classics. These ones here um, pretty much just follow on. So you do need to have that prior knowledge to be able to to continue from where they start off because they do make a lot of references to prior books. Also, we have the Twice Dead King, so this is a Necron um, uh, audiobook, but it does touch down on the darker side of Necron, so go for the Infinite and Divine first before you jump onto this one. It's an amazing book, a book, or should I say books, and it will give you some um, good sort of guidelines around how Necrons are, how they function, what drives them, and what makes them so great as a race, but also what their vulnerabilities are and why they're a dying empire. Once again, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have Ragnar, so we already said that. And then we have Ibram Gaunt, so Gaunt's Ghost. This is a um, theories, just like the Kyphus came, but this is a lot more serious in tone. You could use uh, read this after Kyphus came, I would recommend it. So this is a bit unusual because not only Gaunt is a commissar, but he's also a colonel, so he's given command. Usually colonels and commissars work together, but in this case he is a colonel and he navigates some um, really, really dangerous landscapes. So he's part of the um, Sabbath Crusade, which is a crusade to retake the worlds that, would take, that fall into chaos. And mainly most of his enemies are chaos enemies, but also sometimes some infighting, some very interesting politics. But look, would recommend, this is perhaps my second or third favorite series in the Warhammer 40k. Great, great books. It starts off a little bit slow, but then it escalates severely. It's awesome, awesome, awesome series. I think I'm up to like book 12. I'm waiting on book, th oops. I'm waiting on book 13 here, so very, very good. Would highly, highly recommend to, to read if you haven't already done so. So I don't think they have 13 and 14 on Audible just yet, and I'm really hesitant to just jump into book 15, which I think it's the last one in the series. Book 15 or 16, there could be one more and then caps off the series, but what a remarkable story. Great storytelling. Dan Abner is the master of storytelling. He's like top two or top three uh, writer for Games Workshop. And yeah, look, it's great series. Now this can be an expensive hobby, but if you have Audible and you have some spare time, you get about one credit a month, I think, with your subscription, so you can go from there. I personally have done all of these books. I have more books, but these are like the ones I wanted to highlight over like a two-year period of time. Um, you know, I, I do it when I exercise, when I clean the house. I've done it when I go on holidays, while I was on like, my honeymoon. So these books, or while you're on the plane, these just awesome, awesome. Um, books to immerse yourself in. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below whether or not you agree or disagree with my selection. Don't be scared, um, don't feel intimidated that the Warhammer 40k universe is just as easy to, to get into as ever, despite it being so much lore. Please now you have the luxury of choosing which lore you want to go with first. As always guys, thank you for watching, I do appreciate your time and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace.